everyone. Uh, I am Madame Boskurt and uh, today I am going to talk about a uh, phase contrast MRI. This is my outline for this presentation. I will start with defining phase contrast and its clinical use. I will continue with flow encoding gradients, bipolar velocity encoding gradients in particular. I will also mention about velocity encoding, which is an important parameter in PC MRI. I will briefly talk about PC image reconstruction techniques, uh, phase difference reconstruction, complex difference reconstruction, and my UMRAM experiment. And I will conclude the presentation with comparison with uh, other flow imaging techniques. So what is uh, image contrast MRI? Phase contrast MRI is a method that images moving magnetization by applying flow encoding gradients. Here you can see 3D PC MRA of left foot. So, uh, what happens here? Mm, under constant magnetic fields, stationary spins and moving spins have no phase. Uh, when magnetic gradient is applied, moving spins uh, and station spins acquire phase. And in the second figure, bipolar gradients, uh, bipolar gradients are applied, which I will explain later. After bipolar gradients are applied, stationary spins have no net phase. Uh, however, moving spins will have phase shift as shown in here. And the amount of phase shift is proportional to the velocity of the moving spins. Uh, phase contrast is used to image flow within the blood vessels to image the flow of CSF and track motion. Main applications of PCMRI include cardiovascular flow measurements, science CSF flow studies, and 2D venography. Uh, flow encoding gradients are very crucial in PCMRI because PC uh, pulse sequences are formed by adding the flow encoding gradients. These uh, gradients encode information about flow or motion into the phase. Flow encoding gradients can be applied in X, Y or Z directions independently. So they can be applied in two or three directions. Uh, in that case, PCMRI uh, will be sensitive to the flows in the directions in which flow encoding gradients are applied. Flow encoding gradients can encode information about uh, velocity, acceleration, or higher derivatives of the motion. In PC, information about velocity is generally used. In PC, the most common flow encoding gradient is a bipolar uh, velocity encoding gradient, which you can see in this figure. Uh, there are two lobes of gradient of equal area and of opposite signs. Uh, the shape of the waveform doesn't matter as long as the net uh, area under the waveform is zero. As you can see, uh, for the static spins, the net phase shift is zero. However, for moving spins, there will be a phase shift and it will be uh, related uh, proportional to the velocity. Hence, uh, with bipolar first encoding gradient, it is possible to map both the speed and the direction of a flow. Here is another figure, and in this figure, let's assume there is a spin at position x1 and another uh, spin at position x2. For uh, spins at position x1 and x2, there will be no phase accumulation at the end of a uh, gradient, uh, bipolar gradients. However, uh, if a spin is moving from x1 to x2, it will follow the dotted line and there will be phase accumulation after bipolar gradients are applied. So where do we apply bipolar velocity encoding gradients? There, they can be applied after RF excitation before the imaging pulse sequence. Uh, as a preparation, uh, spoil gradients, the phase transverse magnetization, and actual imaging pulse sequence may follow. Of course, it is not the only way to do that. I 
also want to discuss the mathematical background of the phase velocity relation a little bit. Considering the sequence, we can formulate the uh, phase like that. We can open this expression with Taylor expansion uh, and as a sum of uh, moments where x is a position and v is velocity and it continues with the higher derivatives of the moments of the position. In PC we are interested in uh, velocity so we can discard higher derivatives and then we obtain the relation gamma m1 with v0 and m1 can be expressed by this considering this sequence and uh, from this integral we can obtain g0 delta t t and this is the area so we can uh, make this equal to a t and substituting a t into m1 we can obtain uh, this relation phase a equals to gamma a t v the sign of m v is determined by the sign of the gradient law that is uh, played last because this it comes from this integral and this integral is related with the last law. Velocity encoding uh, is an important parameter in PCMRI. It basically determines uh, the highest and the lowest detectable velocity. This is how it is expressed. Um, for quantity flow analysis, bank is selected to be slightly higher than the expected peak vessel velocity to avoid flow-related aliasing. So what happens uh, if we choose bank less than the peak vessel velocity? Then we will have uh, a velocity aliasing problem where uh, the speed of the magnetization is incorrectly represented. To avoid velocity-aliasing, bank should be chosen larger than the fastest speed expected in the vessel. And if we choose very large, then we'll have, we will have another problem. And in that case, small flow differences cannot be detected. In, the, in general, uh, vessel velocities are given like this. And so we should uh, select bank accordingly. And here you can see an artifact, velocity artifact, resulted from small bank. Uh, and in this case, bank was selected uh, as 15 cm per second. However, if it's uh, at bank equals to 30 cm per second, there is no uh, velocity artifact. There are two more examples I can give here and in that case you can see that in the inner region of the uh, vessel it seems like the blood is flowing on the, to the other direction. However, uh, for larger bank you can see that uh, you, this region is all white so it is just a velocity encoding artifact and here uh, in this in figure B, bank was chosen as 300 cm per second. If it's uh, chosen uh, 200 cm per second, then we will have a velocity aliasing. But if we choose it uh, as 600 cm per second, then we will lose the information here and it won't differentiate the blood vessel from the tissue. I will briefly talk about PCMRI reconstruction techniques, one of which is uh, phase difference reconstruction. Phase difference reconstruction is performed in the image domain and delta phase equals to omega delta m1 v equals to v pi over bank and delta phase the phase difference and v is flow velocity. Without blue and red gradients, this is originally a gradient echo pulse sequence uh, with two measurements applying bipolar gradients in opposite direction, face different images uh, obtained. 
As you can see, the phase difference here and this is the magnetic image. Similarly, there is one reference scan and there is uh, one Wallace tank coding scan. Here, phase images are subtracted and phase contrast close to map is uh, obtained. I also want to mention about flow quantification. It's a process of analyzing flow quantitatively. Q pixel is um, area times mean velocity. S60 here uh, is for conversion. And Q total is the sum of all Q pixels expressed like that. And for small uh, angles, beta smaller than 30 degrees, uh, this can be estimated as a perpendicular vessel because the cross section area uh, compensates the cos, cos beta here. Complex different uh, difference reconstruction uh, is achieved by subtracting the complex data obtained from the two toggles of the bipolar gradient. After the subtraction, a magnetic image is formed from the results. Subtraction can be, for, be for, performed in case space or in, in image domain, but uh, by performing in case space, it can be possible to reconstruct with partial Fourier reconstruction methods. Here you can see a phase difference image that I mentioned about, and it was obtained from B and C, uh, and F is a complex difference reconstruction. The images are pretty different. And I also did an experiment at Umran, uh, and here is shown a slice of brain image. Uh, with FL PC sequence by 3 Tesla MR scanner and the bank was chosen as 90 uh, centimeter per second it was single direction and uh, these arrows are pointing at the blood vessels and Safa helped and volunteered uh, for this experiment there are some motion artifacts which are also uh, visible Before I conclude, I want to share this 4D PC MRI with you. And uh, these two images are 2D uh, PC images. And in this figure, you can see 4D MRI, uh, 4D PC MRI image. And in heat here, uh, flows are large, uh, high velocities are. Uh, mapped to red and low velocities are mapped to blue. As compared to TOF and contrast enhanced MRA, PC has some advantages and disadvantages. There is a huge table here, but uh, this table is summarized in this table. And 2D PC and 3D PC can detect slow flows, which is a plus. Uh, and they have good contrast because uh, we use back and good background suppression. However, the acquisition time is um, not good. And for this reason, it's real time and 3D PC is really time consuming and it's really rarely used in clinical applications. Thanks for listening.